All right, so we are making sure that our money is used properly. It allows your members in your clubs to make sure that they're having a say in how your money's spent. So this is a youth-led organization. We want our youth to um, be involved and be empowered in that process as well. It helps make sure that you're in compliance with our regulations as well as IRS regulations. And it keeps your tax exempt availability eligible. So we are a tax exempt entity. So you can use that for your club purchases as well as your office purchases if you're working for extension. And finally, it helps reduce liability. So if you are following all of the OSU policies and procedures and the IRS regulations, that reduces uh, liability for your treasurer, your youth treasurer, your volunteers that are on the checking account and responsible for those finances and your members in that club. And it's just good business. I mean, we need to track where our money goes. We do that in our personal lives and in our professional lives, and we need to do it for 4-H as well. So where do we keep our funds? Um, so Ohio State University does ask that you have a bank account. You do not keep your funds in a shoebox or under your mattress or buried in the backyard or wherever else you might find those types of things. Um, they do want you to have a local bank account for your club. Um, there's a lot of different banks that you can use. We here in Adams County like to work with our locally owned banks because they don't charge us fees for our program. So make sure that you're checking that out. Try to work with the bank. Um, there are accounts that can be set up because we're ages a nonprofit that are also fee free. Um, but we do like to have a bank account and um, preference for that would be a checking account over a savings. Although savings can be used um, if, if that's a fee thing, if they'll charge for checking but not savings, you can use for a savings account. Um, just be aware that the goal of our 4-H funds is not to save funds and accrue um, a large amount of money. So we want our club funds to be spent on the members as that are earning it and are enrolled in the clubs now. Um, so we're not trying to save up thousands of dollars for later. So things to check with your bank on. Um, these are all things that have different clubs over the years have gotten uh, maybe caught and cost them a little bit of money. But is there a minimum balance to have a checking account? If so, is your club able to sustain that balance? Uh, can that be waived? Those are all questions you'll want to ask. If there is a balance, minimum balance for a checking account, that might be a time that you would look at a savings account. Is there a fee to have a checking account? How are dormant accounts? How long does that take? Um, so especially over COVID when many of us were not actively spending or adding to our checking account, if, if there weren't deposits or withdrawals over a certain time period, some of our banks made our checking accounts dormant and then they actually have the right to uh, take those funds. So you want to make sure that you know the rules around that. And then is it more cost effective to have a savings account or a checking account? So what are the fees for the cost of a money order versus the cost of ordering checks or will they provide you checks for free? All things that you'll want to look into as you're establishing your account. So our key to financial success in 4-H and, and any of our aspects of life is to document. So we wanna make sure that we are documenting our income. So those are things like club dues that might come in or uh, if members are paying for books or t-shirts or uh, maybe you're doing a fundraiser, any kind of income. You wanna document your expenses. So same types of things that are going out. If you're having to pay the extension office for books um, or you're paying your t-shirt vendor for your t-shirts, uh, your fair board for fair passes, if your county charges for those. Document all of those expenses. Get receipts for anything that you purchase. Uh, if you go to Walmart and buy snacks for the club out of club funds or things for your club county fair booth maybe, make sure you keep a receipt on everything. And meeting minutes. Keep a copy of meeting minutes in your financial information. So we'll talk a bit, little bit later about why that's important, but you should have a copy of every month's minutes in there. And of course, your bank statements. You want to make sure that you um, keep your bank statements and 
track those as well. So we have a lot of different record keeping options that we uh, use in 4-H and any of them work well. So you need to really figure out what works best for your life um, and working with your youth treasurer. Again, we do want to involve them as much as possible um, because it is a youth-led organization. So on the left here, or just a general ledger. So if you want to keep a pen and paper ledger and write out those things, that's perfectly fine. In the center is our treasurer's record book. And Joe, if you want to throw the link in uh, where they can find those, we'll put those in chat. But all of our officer record books are available on our Ohio 4-H website. And they're an easy download to print. Um, your extension office might be able to help with that. We can use that as a record keeping method. Or if you're more comfortable using an Excel or a Google Sheet, anything like that, um, as long as you can print it out and provide it to the office if requested, that's perfectly acceptable too. So whichever method you prefer, as long as you are um, keeping record. So this financial record um, in our county, it's due on January 31st. So it should have already been turned in. I'm assuming most counties have a similar deadline. This is for last year. So 2023's um, financial summary. And what this form does is really gives us a snapshot of what your club spent, um, the amount of money that's currently in your checking account or savings account, who has access to that, so who the signers are on your account. And this, we use this in our office to help file uh, your 4-H club's 990 card, so your, your IRS tax information that we file on your behalf each year. We need to make sure that you're with under, you know, under a certain balance and those kinds of things. So this is due in our office January 31st. Hopefully you've already turned this in. You haven't checked your deadlines for your county. So we mentioned some different types of income that you might be uh, having come into your club. So if your club choose, chooses to charge dues, that might be a type of income. Here in Adams County, we also have a countywide assessment. So that comes in at this time of year as we're doing enrollment. This would be more for maybe our affiliates, a grant, although clubs could also receive that. Donations, sometimes those come as monetary donations. We need to track those as well. And then of course, if your club has a fundraiser, um, we want you to track that information. So there's a form to track all of these different types of things. Again, you can use your spreadsheet, uh, there is a page in your treasurer's book that can be used for this, or there's this generic form that Ohio State provides that you're able to track all of your transactions uh, for income. So I'm going to email out the forms that are on the website um, after our Zoom here so that everyone has access to those. Club dues are important to track, so we um, have a form specifically for that. If your club charges dues or your county does, it's really important to make sure that you know who has paid, the date they paid, whether they had cash or check, and then who received that money. So this is something that we would ask to be included in an audit if we once you get to that point. Um, there's also a page, again, in your treasurer's record book that you can use this. This is what the fundraiser form looks like. It's very similar to that. I will provide that as well. It's super important that we give out receipts. So these receipt books are a very easy way to do that. Um, they're pretty inexpensive. You can sometimes pick them up even at a dollar store, but definitely at places like Walmart have these. Um, this is an easy way for your youth treasurer or your financial advisor, you know, your volunteer that's in charge of your finances to collect money from families at your 4-H meeting and then provide them with a receipt, especially if they're paying cash, but either way, uh, cash or check, that gives your families some ability to have you know, documentation that they have paid and your club as well. We know it gets pretty hectic sometimes, especially you know, if you're trying to get everybody's books ordered or their dues paid in the same meeting, um, but taking time to write this out will save you a lot of headache down the road. Another tip for this is as you're writing these receipts, um, if you are paying $10 in club dues and $12 for a t-shirt, note that on here. So you might say $22 in cash, but take the time to, even if it's in shorthand, you know, $10 dues, $12 t-shirt so that you know 
um, the amount they paid for each thing. That will help you later as you're going back through and making sure that everybody has paid for each of their items that are required. So before we spend our club's money, um, it does need to be approved. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. If you have an expense coming up, you can simply present it to the club at a club meeting and ask for approval. So uh, if you have an invoice for your club t-shirt and it is for $200, that needs to be noted in your minutes. We're playing, we are paying XYZ t-shirts, $200 for club t-shirts. That needs to be a motion with a second discussion and approval listed in your minute. The other way that we can do this is you can approve a budget at the beginning of the year. So if your club chooses, uh, you can create a, an annual budget um, and approve that in your minutes at the beginning of the year. So I would do it again early in your program year so that you make sure that it's before any expenses have really taken place. You need to list all of the expenses that you can think of that your club might have this year. So in 4-H, we tend to have, you know, the same things year in and year out. Things like, you know, maybe we're buying t-shirts, we're doing our booth. Um, our club always takes a trip. So you're going to estimate the amount that you think you will spend on each of those things and just create a budget. So if you're spending $300 on t-shirts and $150 on books, $100 for your booth and a $200 trip, put those amounts into a spreadsheet or on a sheet of paper, present that at a club meeting, again, early in the year, and then have a motion to approve the annual budget, again, second it. Um, discussion. It can be altered if members need to make sure that it is voted on. And then you'll need to track expenses against that budget. So, you know, if you end up only spending $150 on t-shirts and you have approved $200, you are in good shape. Uh, the caveat to the budget is if you happen to go over budget. So say t-shirts end up being $250. Price went up this year and you weren't aware, you will need to take that back to the club and ask for an approval at a club meeting before you pay that invoice. Just get that amount. You know, they were $250. We need to pay that invoice. Get that in a motion in your secretary's minute. So we're trying not to accrue large amounts of cash in our clubs. Um, we want to make regular deposits, especially, you know, after meetings. So work with your treasurer or your financial volunteer to make sure that's happening, that money is getting into the bank um, shortly after it's collected so that we don't have huge amounts of money sitting around. Uh, we prefer that you pay in by check or with a money order if you have a savings account. If your club has a credit card, uh, you possibly could do that. Check with your county office before you do that. None of my clubs in Adams County have a credit card, so we try to avoid that. Again, you are a tax-exempt entity, so you can use this. There's a sales tax exemption blanket form that you just simply put your club EIN number and fill out the information. Some businesses will ask you to do a separate form, so if you go to Walmart and buy things, uh, they will ask you one time to go up and fill out a separate form, and they'll give you a little card with your club's name on it, and then you're able to use that uh, from then on out, just that card, and you don't have to have this particular form. But print this form out. I'll, I'll email you that as well, and it's available on the state website, um, probably on your county website as well. But if you are purchasing supplies for your club meeting, um, you can use this tax-exempt form. So if it's for an educational purpose, which our 4-H clubs are, feel free to use that. That saves you a little bit. Again, if we have expenses, we want to make sure that we are getting receipts. That can look like a lot of different things. Um, if you're going to the grocery store or Walmart or wherever, you're going to have a receipt just like this. Um, make sure it only has club expenses on it. If you are ordering t-shirts or um, books, things like that, you will either have an invoice from a company or a receipt from your extension office. Um, some businesses might give you a receipt similar to those receipt books. Keep all of those. Um, keep them together in by month and you will need them as we go along. So reimbursements are not our preferred method of expenses. Um, we know that sometimes it has to happen. So if it's an emergency, um, you need things, your club meetings that night, the advisor with the checkbook is not 
able to go purchase it or is out of town or whatever, um, we do allow reimbursements to advisors or families to, uh, in an emergency situation like that where it's a last minute thing. You do need to provide proper receipt documentation though in order um, to get that. So this is an example of an unacceptable receipt. Uh, so if you are going to the store and you have your personal items and you have your 4-H club items, please do that in two separate transactions. That just makes it a lot cleaner for your 4-H club and when we're doing our audit. So don't, the, in this situation, they put all their items together and then just went through and black lined um, anything that was their personal item and asked for uh, reimbursement for the rest. They were also charged tax because they didn't take their tax exempt form. So all of those are things that we wanna to try to avoid. So try to do it in a separate transaction. Um, try to have that tax exempt form because then you're um, saving the club some money there. Again, lots of ways to track expenses. You can use your Excel spreadsheets. Um, we have a form. There's a form in your record book. Um, best practice as always is the form that Ohio State provides um, but other things are acceptable, uh, such as a spreadsheet, if that's easier for you. Monthly reconciliation. So just like we need to balance our checkbook at home, uh, we need to do a monthly reconciliation with our club expenses. Um, I really encourage you to include your treasurer in this process um, and let them see. This is a great learning experience for them. Let them see how that works. So you'll need your bank statement. You'll need any kind of receipts that you had for the month and uh, your income log, all those things, and just go through and reconcile it, make sure everything adds up and then keep everything together for the month. So this is a new document. This was just released in January. Our clubs are audited on a three-year rotation. So every third year, your extension office will be looking a little more closely at your finances. Uh, we do a, a basic audit each year, you know, look over and make sure everything looks right. But every third year, we're going to ask for a little more in-depth information. So I include this. It's it's a pretty simple process. Don't don't be scared if you don't have all of these things uh, right up front. I already have some clubs that are a little nervous about it, but it's going to be a learning process as we start through these. Really, you just need to make sure you have all of that financial information we've talked about, such as bank statements, receipts, expenses, and income, anything like that as well as a copy of your club minutes. So that's the part that might be a little tricky if we haven't been approving all of our expenses, we need to make sure that we do that. So if it's your year to be audited, be aware your, your extension office might reach out with um, some more questions or a little more information than what you typically provide, um, but they will send you a list of things that they need you to gather up and then they'll look those over and get back with you with any feedback or questions they have. So audits are important to make sure that we are, again, following all of our guidelines and rules to make sure that all of our funds are accounted for um, and that they're being spent in the way that they were intended, making sure that they're used for the club expenses that are eligible and making sure that our members are having a say in those decisions. Again, this helps us keep our eligibility for our tax exempt status. So Ohio State has to make sure that we're following those rules as well. And then it, it again, is just good business for us. So they're gonna ask you for all of your financial information. Um, sometimes they might ask for more than one year if there are questions. So um, just keep those together, put them in a binder by month and just keep building um, each month and year. And, and saving those and holding on to those. They will also ask you for monthly secretary reports, so make sure that you're keeping track of your minutes. So again, we do a quick audit each year. Um, a more detailed audit will be every three years. If you have a new treasurer that takes over, not necessarily your youth treasurer, but maybe you're changing financial volunteers, uh, the person on the checking account is changing. You can request an audit for that purpose as well, if your club would like. And then, of course, if there's any suspicious activity, then we would uh, conduct a pretty detailed audit at that point. All right, I know that was a ton of information we threw at you. Um, are there any questions that, like general questions that I can answer, or I can direct you to your extension office if it's a county deadline that you have a question on? If not, I will ask that you either visit this go.osu.edu slash triple E-T-L-N-L 
or uh, visit the QR code, it's the same website. That is a triple ET um, for my teaching, and that will help me out. I do wanna give credit, um, the base of this PowerPoint was created by Melinda Ryan up in Champaign County. So um, I took it and added it. We will send out all of those forms. Um, Joe threw a lot of links in the chat too. There's a really great landing page on our state website for finances that have a lot of information that's, that's valuable. All right, well, so we are two minutes early. Thank you for logging in today. We appreciate you guys spending your lunch time with us. All right, thank you all.